In this week's Tuesday Photoshop tutorial, I want to take a look at a way to add realistic clouds to your photograph and involves a little more than just simply using the clouds filter. I'm Dave Cross. If you've ever tried using the cloud filter in Photoshop, Render Clouds, you'll know that it really doesn't do that great a job in terms of realism. So here's a little trick you can use to start with that filter, but then do a couple of things to make your clouds look that much more realistic. So here's the photograph that I want to add my clouds to. I want to add a few up in here. So I'm just going to make a new separate document to work on. And what I like to do is experiment a little bit. I'm going to zoom out just a bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to make a new layer. And then I'm going to make a small selection in the top corner and only render the clouds initially in here because I find when you do the whole document, it often makes them too small and I want bigger clouds. I'm going to make sure that my foreground and background colors are black and white. So I just press tap the letter D for default colors and then go to the filter menu and choose render clouds. And this is the effect that you'll get. It'll just randomly create some random pattern. Now in previous versions of Photoshop up until 2017, you could press Command or Control F to reapply the same filter. In the case of the clouds filter, it would just randomly generate something each time. Because that is now used for the search command and if you have CC 2017, the shortcut has changed a little bit here, you can see. So you can either use the shortcut or just go to this menu if you don't remember shortcuts that easily. So what I'm looking for here is obviously patches of white clouds, but I also want some pretty defined black areas as well. So one of the tricks with the clouds filter is if you throw in the option or alt key, it creates more dramatic or what some people used to call angrier clouds. So I'm going to hold down option or alt and do that regeneration. You'll see when I do it now, I'm getting a much more intense kind of a look with more black in it. So that's an example of the kind of thing that I might want. Now, because I know the end result, I'm sort of looking at this with a different eye. Once you've done this technique a couple of times, you'll get to the point of looking at the clouds and go, yes, that will work once I do the next couple of steps. Now I look at this and I think eventually I might want to turn this on its side, but first I'm going to free transform this to fill up the whole area because remember I wanted larger clouds like this. So what we have to imagine is the black is going to go away and this is going to be your cloud. So again in this case I think it would make better sense for our clouds to go this way. So that's looking pretty good now but I want to get this selected but I only really want the cloudy white parts not the black area. So I can go to select color range. Now it's remembering the last time I used this, I had the preview on quick mask. So this is showing me the white areas are what's selected. I could hold down the shift key and try and get a little more. And then of course use the fuzziness slider if I wanted to, to try and redefine this a little bit. I'm going to say something like that probably looks the way that I want. So now I've got this random kind of look here. I'm going to take my move tool, click and hold inside this area, drag it into my other photograph and then let go. And that will automatically make a new layer. Now I can free transform that. It's okay to stretch things of course, because it is supposed to be cloudy looking. So it doesn't really matter. Let's move this up a little bit like that and hit enter. Now there's a couple things I don't like too much. The gray is a little too gray for my liking. So one way to deal with that is to double click on the layer to go to these, the layer style and particularly the blend if slider. So I'm on this layer. If I take the dark triangle, I'm going to move it to the point where the gray pretty much goes away and then hold down the option alt key to split the triangles and pull it back a bit, something like this. So there's still a little bit of gray, but now it has that nice puffiness that I want. Now there's a few areas where the clouds are in front of the buildings and of course I could mask them, but I always usually try first taking the underlying layer and trying taking the dark triangle and see if that doesn't push it behind everything pretty successfully, which I think it did mostly in this case. Click OK. I would still probably add a layer mask and just to be sure, take my paintbrush and paint over any areas that I think might have gone in there. Now that I've done that, I might use levels on here and see if I can't lighten up the gray area just a little further. There we go. 
So as you can see, just using the render clouds filter by itself really doesn't give you the effect you want. I think that's why a lot of people just sort of stop at that point because like, well, that doesn't look realistic. But using this method where you start with render clouds, I like, as I said, I like to start with a smaller area and then scale a little bit larger because the clouds tend to be fairly small and then make, use a color range to make a selection, drag it in and tweak accordingly. And just like this, you can get some nice etc. But there you have it, a simple way, a better way I think to make clouds than simply using the render clouds filter by itself. Be sure to tune in next week for another free Tuesday Photoshop tutorial and share with your friends and like this video if you would. I'd appreciate it. We'll see you next week.